Hello, my name is George Cairns, and in this video, we're going to set fire to things safely using Photoshop's Flames effect. And this fun topic was requested by Sandy Joy via Google+. So here's one for you, Sandy. I'm going to set fire to my photograph here I took in Canada in a barn. I was mucking around with the flash, really trying to get some atmospheric lighting. And what I'm going to do now is show you how to add fire to the barn to create a nice dramatic picture. And we're going to do that by extending the flames along paths. So the first thing we need to do is to choose a suitable source image such as this one here. You can set fire to absolutely anything and then click down here to create a new transparent layer. And that just means that we can control the fire more easily and move it around once it's been added to the layer. Now we're going to use this tool here, which is the pen tools friend. It's the freeform pen tool, which you can click and hold down the mouse button to access like so. And that enables you to draw a path of any shape. I'm just going to do a fairly straight line along the bottom here. And I'm going to curl it around as well and get it to follow along the door a little bit like so. I'm now ready to add flames to this like a flame bar on a movie set perhaps. So go to filter, go down to render and then there's flame. Now because the path can be quite long, you can only fit a certain amount into the preview window. So it's giving you a little warning there that it's only going to show you the first 3000 pixels of the path. But that's fine. Just click OK and then up pops this window here. Now what I'm going to do is go back to default. So it should look pretty much the same as it would do in your version of Photoshop. So we'll start off by increasing the length of the flame. Let's just drag that to the right and you'll get a bigger jet of flame shooting up like so. Now it's a little bit sharp and pointy. So what I'm going to do is randomize the length there. Click OK and then we'll get a little bit more of a random and more realistic looking flame. But it's still rather pointy. So I'm going to pop to the advanced panel. I'm going to go down to flame shape and change it from the default parallel to this oval shape, which just gives me a little bit more of a realistic kind of curve to the flame. And then it ends up in a point like so. Let's go back now to basic. And then we can play around with the width as well, just to spread it out a little bit more, make it more concentrated. And we'll play with angle later on when we need flames shooting up the side of the walls of our barn. We can spread the interval out a little bit more, just to randomize the flame a little bit more like so. And then we can go to quality. And I'm going to bump that up to high, but it's going to take longer to render. And you can see it's rendering along the path that I created. And the flame type is multiple flames in one direction. But there are different types of flames that you can use. And we'll have a look at those later on. So let's click OK to apply that flame to our transparent layer. And it's taking a little bit of time to render it up now. And that's all depending on the amount of RAM you've got in your computer. But I'll let it chug along in real time because I want to show you how much work it does take to reduce flames. There we go. It should shoot up in a second around my feet. Whoosh. And then you can see we've got the path still visible. So if we go to the Paths panel, click outside the Work Path. That gets rid of that little path icon. Then we can go to the Move tool and just drag the flame down a little bit. So it's just shooting up from the bottom of the screen. So there's our first layer of fire. Let's add some fire licking up the side of this pillar here by going to Layers, creating a new transparent layer by clicking down here. And then we'll use the Freeform Pen tool to draw a new path going up around the edge of this wooden pillar. And let's continue drawing the path upwards until we get to the top like so. We now have a vertical path. So let's pop up to filter, go down to render and we're going to go to flame again. Let's click OK on the preview warning. And now we've got a different shape path and a different type of fire. And here again, we've got multiple flames going in one direction. But we want to change the angle so they're kind of shooting up to the left a little bit. And to do that, just drag this slider to the right. And then they start to billow out that way. You can then experiment whether they're going to go sideways or sideways and up like we have here. And you can also experiment with other things such as the interval just to change the variety of the flame. I'm also going to go to advanced and start to muck about with turbulence just to billow them around as if there's lots of wind in the particular location. That gives it a bit more variety and it looks a little bit more realistic as well. So let's go and click OK to render up that. And that should then lick up the side of the barn and add a bit more drama to the photograph without singeing the hair of your subject. Here we go. And there's our flames. If they look a little bit too big, we can always press Command Z to undo, go back to filter, go back to render. And the nice thing is it remembers the settings you used before. So what you need to do then is just go to basic and take the length down to scale them down so that they're more in the background. And then click OK again to apply the slightly smaller flames. Here we go. That should render up nicely now. Like so. Yeah, that's a little bit more realistic. So they're in a different shape now to the ones on the ground, which are going straight up. These ones are billowing out to the side. 
And again, you can see the path there. So we can go back to paths, click outside the work path to deselect it and go back to layer. Then it's just a simple case of drawing more paths or more layers and adding more fire. And you can experiment with the direction of the fire as well, just to add variety to your flames. And to blend the flames with the subject, what I'm going to do is create a new transparent layer. I'm going to go and grab the eyedropper tool and just sample some of the yellow flames for the foreground color, then go and swap to the background color and sample some of the more orange flames like so. So we have a bit of color there. Then grab the gradient tool by clicking here. And then I'm going to choose a radial gradient. Let's click on the gradient editor in the options bar and make sure we've got the foreground to background gradient selected. Click OK and then just click and drag outwards from the center and that does an orange to a yellow gradient. We can swap that around if you want to have a yellow to orange like so. And then if I change the blending mode to something like soft light, it just adds a nice red glow to the rest of the shot and helps blend the flames and the other details together with a more coherent color palette. I'm going to take the opacity down a little bit for a more subtle result like so. And if you find the flames are going in areas that you don't want them to go, like this fire over the hand there, I don't think I'd have stood still if that was happening in real life. So I'm gonna click on that layer and add a layer mask, grab the brush tool, set the foreground color to black, and you can just click and spray to remove the flames from that particular part of the image like so. I want to show you one last thing about flames before I go. Let's just go to another image here. And here we have flames licking up around the building there using the same technique as before. But we've also extruded them from a circular path to create these solar flares. And to do that, I'm just going to create a new layer by clicking here. This is going to be very rough and ready. And then choose a path. You can go for rectangular or circular and just click and draw like that. And then if you right click inside, you can say make work path. And that's how you get a circular path. And then if you go to filter and go to render and choose flame, you can see it's extruding around the path, but it's going in the same direction as before. So what we want to do is to follow the path's directions. And that's this one here, number four. And that will then shoot out from the center of the path outwards like so. You can change the angle as well. And experiment with that. So it's going inwards or outwards, depending on what you choose here. So let's just click OK to have a quick look at that very rough and ready solar flare effect. It's obviously not in the right position, but you can see it shooting out from around a circular path. So that's something for you to think about when working on your creative projects. So that's how to have fun with flames without getting singed. And that's thanks to Sandy there for suggesting this topic. If anybody else has other topics you'd like me to cover, then do leave me a comment and I'll see what I can do. And if you're interested in going further with your Photoshop creativity, click on the link above and that will tell you more about my iBook, which is on photo painting in Photoshop using a variety of different creative techniques.